runoff is the outflow of precipitation from a catchment. It is usually conveyed via surface channels. For this reason, runoff is seen as an output from a catchment over a certain period. In the view of surface channels, runoff is basically the stream flows through it. If we measure the stream flow, we measure the runoff. Stream flow can be measured directly or indirectly. However, it would be costly and time-consuming if we want to monitor the stream flow continuously and obtain real-time stream discharge data. To achieve this economically, a two-step procedure is developed. In the first step, we obtain data on stream discharge and water surface elevation, which is also known as stage through rigorous measurements. Once we have the data, we can derive the stage discharge relationship of a stream. With this correlation, we can estimate the stream discharge by knowing the stage. The monitoring of stage is easier to conduct continuously. This allows us to obtain real-time stage data, and by applying the stage discharge relationship, we will then acquire the real-time stream flow data. The simplest way to measure the stage of a stream is by using staff gauge. The gauge should be fixed to a structure nearby while stay in contact with the water surface. Some examples of such structures are abutment and pier. Staff gauge should be fixed in such a way that allows the observer to take its readings from a distance with ease. When it is impossible to capture the entire variation of water surface elevation using only one staff gauge, we may need to place multiple gauges at different locations. The presence of stream bed with huge level difference from one part to another is one of the reasons for this to occur. The stream needs to be divided into sections of consistent bed level, and then one gauge is provided for each of them. The staff gauges in this configuration are also called sectional gauges. The readings from gauges need to be taken at frequent intervals. Only then, we may define the variation of stage with time in an accurate manner. To further ease the process, automatic stage recorders can be used. Plot gauge recorder is probably the most common one. It consists of a float which balances over a pulley using counterweight. The float is always in contact with the water surface. Large float with small friction is preferable to ensure the instrument is sensitive enough to respond with the change in stage. The pulley is connected to a combination of a pen and clockwork driven drum. This mechanism converts the pulley rotation into equivalent vertical displacement that represents the changes in water surface elevation. The entire instrument is properly enclosed and protected against damages in steering well. Other than float gauge recorder, bubble gauge may be used. Compressed air is discharged through the outlet of gas circuit located at the bottom of river at a very small rate. As soon as the gas discharges, the gas pressure will be measured. This pressure equals to the depth of water above the outlet. A bubble gauge is sometimes preferred over a float gauge recorder for several reasons. The installation of bubble gauge does not require stealing well and thus, it is a more economical approach. Moreover, the instrument can work despite having large changes in stage. Regardless of the method and instrument, our aim for stage measurement is to produce a stage hydrograph. It is a chronological plot of stage that tells us the variation of water surface elevation from time to time. This data alone is helpful for us to design for structures that need peak water level as input, such as bridges and weirs. Flood warning and protection works require this information too. To measure the stream flow, 
we first need to measure the velocity of stream. The velocity is usually measured at specific points in the flow cross-section. This can be achieved by using a current meter. There are two main types of current meters, namely vertical axis and horizontal axis meters. A vertical axis meter uses cups that rotate in horizontal plane to measure the flow velocity. A horizontal axis meter, on the other hand, takes measurement using a propeller in front of sounding weight that rotates about the horizontal axis. Not that a vertical axis meter may mistakenly show positive velocity when it is being lifted vertically in still water. A current meter can register flow velocity ranging from 0.15 to 4 meter per second. The output from the measurement will be the number of revolutions throughout the observation period. We will need to determine the average number of revolutions per second afterwards. The stream velocity is calculated using this value while applying calibration equation. Constant A and B are unique to each instrument, and therefore they are usually determined prior to the data collection process. A towing tank is used for this purpose. It is a long channel containing steel water, while consists of a mechanism that moves a carriage over the water surface at constant speed. The instrument is first being mounted to the carriage while making sure the measuring elements, namely cups or propellers, stay immersed in water. Then, the carriage is towed at a constant speed, and corresponding average revolutions per second is determined. The experiment is repeated with different towing speed. At the end of the experiment, we can plot a graph of velocity against average revolutions per second and find the best fit line that yields the calibration equation. The calibration of instrument may need to be done occasionally to ensure its accuracy. Prior to the velocity measurement, we need to find the right gauging site for the river we want to measure. A suitable site should fulfill the following criteria. First, the cross-section should be well-defined and does not change in various seasons. The site should be in a straight and stable reach while being easily accessible all through the year. On top of that, the location should be free from any backwater effect. The depth of the river is measured at various locations. The instrument for the measurement can be sounding rod, sounding weights, or even echo depth recorder. Once we get the cross-section of gauging site, we need to divide it into several subsections by verticals. We use different points to take the average velocity of flow based on the depth of each subsection. If the depth is only up to 3 meter, we will put the current meter at the point of 0.6 times the depth below water surface. This is also known as single point observation method, and the result we obtain can be treated as the average velocity in that vertical. For moderately deep stream, we may observe the velocity at two points at 0.2 and 0.8 times the depth beneath the water surface. The average velocity will be the mean of these values. Once we have the average velocity data for each subsection, we can proceed with the calculation of stream flow using area velocity method. Let's try this in an example. Consider a cross-section of stream with a total width of 12 meters. The cross-section is divided into 6 vertical subsections of 2 meter width. Then, current meter is deployed at the center line of each strip. The calibration equation for the current meter is 0.5 ns plus 0.25 meter per second, where ns is the average number of revolutions per second. The collected data are tabulated as below. First, from the total of revolutions obtained throughout the observation duration, we calculate the number of revolutions per second. Then, 
we apply calibration equation and convert it into equivalent flow velocity. Based on the field observation method, we determine the average velocity for each subsection. Subsequently, we calculate the area of each subsection. Knowing the stream discharge equals to the product of flow velocity and cross-sectional area, we can then calculate the segmental discharge. The stream flow for the gauging site is the summation of segmental discharge. Thank you for watching. If you find this video helpful, please share it with your friends. We will see you guys soon. Goodbye.